This video was brought to you by the TLDR store. Pick up any of our pin badges, including the Canada design, for 10% off using code TRUDEAU. The store is linked below. So on Sunday, Justin Trudeau, the Canadian Prime Minister, called a snap election for September 20th, two years ahead of schedule. This timetable allows for just a 36-day campaign, the shortest allowed by Canadian election law, which says that any campaign must be between 36 and 50 days long. According to Trudeau, the election is intended as a referendum on the government's COVID response, giving voters what Trudeau's described as a chance to finish the fight against the virus. This represented a bit of a U-turn, because over the last two years, Trudeau has insisted that he didn't want an election. But this is what usually happens in Canada with minority governments, which are relatively common thanks to the fact that they've sort of got three main parties. Basically, a minority government say they don't want an early election and then call one anyway. In fact, only one minority government has lasted the full four years in modern Canadian history, and that was from 1977 to 1981 under Bill Davis. So, safe to say it doesn't happen much these days. So, that's what he said, but why did he really do it? Well, the short answer is that the Liberals, Trudeau's party, are currently in a minority government, and it looked like a good time to ask the electorate for a majority. The Liberals have been in power as the largest party in the Canadian Parliament since 2015, when Trudeau won 184 out of the 338 seats, with 39% of the vote. But in 2019, the Liberals failed to replicate their 2015 success and won 157 seats, with just 33% of the vote. Because they were pretty close to the 170 seats required for a legislative majority, the Liberals decided not to enter a coalition and just rely on temporary support for any legislation. But this was the lowest vote share for a single-party minority government in Canadian history, so things weren't going to be easy. This wasn't helped by the fact that the Conservatives actually beat the Liberals on popular vote, with 34%. But, thanks to Canada's first-past-the-post system, only won 121 seats. Anyway, Trudeau's Liberals have been governing as a minority party ever since. And while the minority government has functioned relatively effectively, especially over Covid, Trudeau has been unable to pass the Liberals' biggest legislative ideas, like a universal basic income and extending unemployment insurance to the gig economy. For example, last month the Liberals accused the Conservatives of blocking the passage of Bill C-6, which would ban LGBTQ plus conversion therapy. But there wasn't all that much they could do because they lacked a majority. You get the point. Obviously, Trudeau and the Liberals would prefer a parliamentary majority, and they thought that now was a good time to ask for it. But why now? Well, the pandemic does seem to benefit incumbents. So far, in the five provincial and territorial elections since the pandemic was declared in March 2020, incumbents have won every single one, and usually with an increased majority. The national polls are also looking pretty good for the Liberals at the moment. Over the pandemic, they've held a steady five-point lead over the Conservatives, despite a scandal involving the WE charity, which basically received a whole load of public money and then paid Trudeau's family members for speeches and appearances. And despite this, the Liberals have been polling about 35%, while the Conservatives have been polling between 25 and 30%. If these numbers held up in an election, it would probably be enough for Trudeau to get a majority. They've also been helped by the fact that the Conservatives' new leader, Erin O'Toole, isn't particularly well-liked. He struggled to get airtime over the pandemic to present himself to voters, and he's got the lowest approval rating of any of the leaders of the three main parties, at about minus 20. He has tried to modernise the Conservatives. He's pro-choice, apparently believes in climate change, and even joined a pride parade, while at the same time trying to keep his base on side. By doing stuff like campaigning against the closure of the Keystone oil pipeline, and constantly criticising wokeness. This has been more confusing than modernising though, and it's been made worse by the fact that most of his party disagree with him. In March, Conservative delegates rejected a motion to recognise and act on climate change by 54%, and in June, 70% of the Conservative caucus backed a bill limiting abortion. O'Toole has also attacked Trudeau for his fiscal irresponsibility, but these attacks don't seem to have landed particularly well. 
and that's shown in Trudeau's approval rating, which just about breaks even. Trudeau's numbers have probably been buoyed by a successful vaccine rollout, with 62% of Canada's population fully vaccinated, and 72% having received at least one dose, one of the highest rates in the world. This is presumably part of the rationale behind Trudeau's decision. He's hoping that voters will reward him for a successful vaccination programme. Interestingly, the best performing leader in terms of approval ratings is Jagmeet Singh, the leader of the New Democratic Party. In 2011, New Democrats were the second largest party in Canada, winning 31% of the vote. But in 2015 and 2019, much of that vote swung to the Liberals, and the New Democratic Party got only 20% of the vote in 2015 and 16% in 2019. The New Democrats will be hoping to reverse that trend and are currently polling at around 20% with Singh enjoying a personal approval rating of about positive 10. Singh is probably to the left of the Liberals, though. He wants to raise the federal minimum wage to $15 an hour, decriminalise the possession of drugs, implement universal health care, cancel some student debt, and increase taxes on the highest earners. Nonetheless, he's still not polling much over 20%, which is why Trudeau feels comfortable about calling this election. So, is this a good idea? Well, while the Liberals might be polling relatively well, other polls suggest that most Canadians just don't want an election. Polling conducted in late July found that 55% of Canadians thought that it wasn't the time for an election, compared to just 37% who were in favour. So, if Canadians perceive this election as political opportunism, it could hurt Trudeau's chances. The Liberals should also be worried about turnout. Covid means fewer voters, especially if Canada's hit by a new variant, and low turnout has historically favoured the Conservatives. On the other hand though, this is probably the best chance that Trudeau is going to get. Very few politicians win three elections in a row, and the opposition won't be divided and unpopular forever. To be honest though, as with all elections, it's all still up for grabs. But what do you think? Is this shameless political tactics or a democratic opportunity for Canada to reflect on its Covid response? And regardless of the motivation, will it pay off for Trudeau? Let us know your thoughts in the comments below. As I said at the start, this video is brought to you by the TLDR store, and there you can grab any of our Countries with Shoes pin badges, including our brand new Season 6 badges, the Globe with Shoes and Naturally Canada. You can find more about these high quality enamel designs by clicking the link to the store below, and if you do buy, you can get 10% off by using code TRUDEAU. Also be sure to subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon to be notified every time we release a new video. Special thanks to our Patreon backers who make videos like this one possible, and if you want to see your name at the end of videos, then you too can back us on Patreon. The link to that is in the description.